پر محمد وعال محمد سلوات I can ask the brothers to come forward. It's more of a discussion, interactive, rather than a, the majlis. So if we can have the brothers come forward in the masjid. Uh, before I hand it over to Sheikh, uh, again, once again, I'd like to thank Sheikh for taking uh, his time out and uh, facilitating this session for us. And inshallah, we can benefit from this. Um, I know it will be very beneficial for those that are taking part uh, in the annual TQC, as well as our general uh, public. Uh, I'll hand it over to Sheikh. The session will be run by Sheikh, and then I think maybe in the end we may have time for, for questions. But I'll pass it over to Sheikh. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, salawat. Thank you, man. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى أهله أهل الله. Once again, brothers and sisters, it is indeed a great pleasure to be here in Leicester for the last nine nights, and tomorrow, insha Allah, will be. The tenth night, inshallah, which will be the last night. But obviously, Leicester is just a neighbor to Brom, so it's not far. <laughs> we always come to Leicester. I think my next visit, if we remain alive, will be during the Quran competition, inshallah. Inshallah, and then we take it from there, inshallah. Yeah? So tonight's session, I think, is definitely one of the most important session. It's about the Holy Quran. And I mean, we cannot, under any circumstance, claim to be good Muslims without building a relationship with the Holy Quran. So it's important from time to time we have these Quranic sessions and to write to delve into somewhat details in appreciating this great book, which is no doubt Allah's gift to his creation. So what I'm going to do briefly, I will give an introduction. And thereafter, we'll open for your comments, questions, and then we'll try, based on our capabilities, to answer. I would like to discuss our approaches to the Holy Quran. What do I mean by that? There are at least five ways each individual Muslim can approach Quran. Some of these ways, you, are, you don't have a choice but to rely on the Holy Prophet and Ahl al-Bayt. And some, you can try to apply your own understanding of the Holy Quran. And so that's what I seek to discuss and then we'll open for your interaction. You see, there is a verse in the Holy Quran which you all know. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبْ إِنَّ كَوْمِ اتَّقَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا And the messenger said, O oh my Lord, indeed, my people have taken this Quran as a thing abandoned. Obviously, there are so many discussions among scholars as to whether the Holy Prophet complained while he was alive or no, he will complain on the day of Qiyamah. Some said he complained while he was alive when people rejected the Holy Quran. But most of our good Mufassirin, 
They said, no, on the day of Qiyamah, the Holy Prophet will complain to Allah how is Ummah abandoned the Holy Quran. And there are three ways one can easily abandon the Holy Quran. Let me mention this and then I go through the five ways we can relate to the Holy Quran. So if you fall under one of these three, then I think you are abandoning the Quran. I'm sorry. The first one is not to know how to recite Quran in its original language. Although you have the capability to do so. If you don't have the capability due to age, due to illness, that's okay, no problem. Mushkil nahi. But if you've got the capability, sound mind, energetic, you, it's not an excuse not to know how to recite Quran Habib in its original language. It may sound simple, because I know there are people, especially some of our Shias, no, 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 understanding is the most important, forget about recitation. No, 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 please, man. Recitation is equally important. Can you imagine you have an imam who comes here to lead you salah? He said, I don't know how to recite. In the name, Allah is great. In the name of Allah, most gracious. <laughs> All praises is due to Allah. I think the whole Lester Jabbar to run away. <laughs> so that's number one. Recitation is very. So if you don't know how to recite, or you know, but you know what? You're making mistakes. Maharij are not good. I think it's not too late, Habibi. You can learn, man. It's not too late. You need to learn. That's number one. Second example of abandoning Quran is not listening to the recitation of the Holy Quran. You see? Quran itself says when Quran is being recited, keep quiet and listen. La'allakum turhamun, isn't it? You may be perhaps... Some said, no, it's not perhaps. You will be blessed so long as you listen to the recitation of the Holy Quran. So as a mu'min or as a Muslim, you care less. Quran is being recited or you're playing Quran in your car, you know. And you don't care. It means you're abandoning the Holy Quran. That's number two. The last one is the main one. is it? Which is, not striving to understand the meanings of the verses of the Holy Quran. And there's one attached to this last one. So, I must know how to recite. I must listen to the recitation of the Holy Quran. But that is not enough. I need to seek the understanding of the verses of the Holy Quran. If classes, that's why I personally, this is my, my, my opinion, I stand to be corrected. I don't think a community is a good community if there are no Quran classes in that community. I, I, I personally, I don't. Seriously. Shia? You, are you proud that Prophet said, I live two way teachings, Quran and al bayt and no Quran class? No, 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 no. Then I think we are joking, man. There must be Quran classes. Recitation, understanding. This is very important because Quran is everything. Imam Ali, we say, is a walking Quran. He's a speaking Quran. Being to the being in the house of Imam Amir al muminin and Sayyida Fatima, alayhi salam, she ended up responding to every question with the verses of the Holy Quran. And yet me, as a Shia of Ali, I'm not saying all, I'm just giving... Uh, an example. Yet me as a Shia of Imam Amir al muminin and Sayyidah Fatima, Quran is not a priority in my life. Quran is not a priority in my mosque. Quran is not a priority in my center. No, man. That is why it's important. Every single program of ours must begin with the recitation of the Holy Quran. Even if there are two verses or three verses, begin with the words of Allah. It's higher than any other word. Every program we have, whether Khushali, whether Shahada, 
wafat whatever quran habibi quran is important it brings the nuraniya of allah tabarak wa ta'ala so the third way to abandon quran you don't seek the understanding of it and then i said there's one under it is the application of the understanding of the quran so inshallah i hope with this introduction we'll all try to build our relationship with the holy quran okay now this is what I'm going to mention here are utmost, of utmost importance. Wallahi. Maybe you heard it before. I don't know. Maybe you haven't. If you've heard it before, let it serve as a reminder. If you haven't, then it's something to think about, really. So there are five ways any one of us can approach Quran or can relate to the Holy Quran. When I talk of relating to the Holy Quran, meaning in trying to understand Quran, because Quran is not being given to us to keep it on a shelf. Because Prophet told us there are people who recite Quran and Quran curses them. And Imam Zain al Abdin beautifully mentioned if I lose everything and I have Quran with me, I will not suffer from loneliness. First way to approach Quran, you can take note of this. They call it al istidhar Approach Quran by looking at the apparent meanings of the Holy Quran. The Zohar. Quran is in Arabic language. Anyone who has a good command of Arabic, yeah, when he or she read understands something. That is the apparent meaning. No, it is translated in English. MashaAllah, you are all English people. Alhamdulillah. So a good translation, like Ali Kuli Karai, for example, anyone who understands English, when you read, you will get something. So there are people who only approach Quran in this way. It's good, but it's not enough. So you realize people, they have Quran in their houses. They go through it. They pick up something. Some even will tell you, Sheikh, when I open the Quran, it's like Quran is talking to me. So that is al istidhar looking at just the apparent meanings of the Holy Quran because of having a command in a particular language. For this one, you don't need anyone really. When I say you don't need anyone, you don't need a teacher. <laughs> you understand the language, Abibi? So you're just reading, but that doesn't mean that you'll understand everything. But at least you'll pick up something. Let's go to the second one. The second way to approach Quran is tafsir. So first is al istidhar Second is at tafsir Question. What is tafsir? Huh? Somebody saying deeper meaning from the ladies. What do you understand by tafsir? Okay, she's also supporting you, seconding you. Deeper meaning? Okay, deeper meaning, but it doesn't give the true meaning of tafsir. Somewhat. Tafsir, my dear brothers and sisters, simply means determining the intended meanings of the Holy Quran by Allah. Allah, upon revealing those verses, he intended certain meanings. That is his book, it's not my book. <laughs> so tafsir is to determine. Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, you reveal this book to us. What's your intended meaning? So when it comes to tafsir, I cannot just apply my mind, Habibi. I can't. I want you to listen to this very carefully, kindly, please. The first one, you can apply your mind. No big deal, but you can't impose on anyone. Tafsir, you can't apply your mind. In fact, Prophet said, Man fassar al-Qur'ana bi ra'yihi faliyatabawwa amaka'adahu minan nar. Whoever interprets Qur'an by his or herself opinion should prepare for his abode in Jahannam. So tafsir is not my cup of tea. Even our Mufassirin, Allah Ma'atabah, for example, Allah Ma'atabah, of Majmu'ul Bayan, for example, of course, Mizan, you know. 
Ayatollah Makarim Shirazi, for example, of Al Amsal, for Tafsir al Quran, Namuna, for example. And you have so many other tafsir that we have. These Mufassirin, these commentators of the Holy Quran, whatever is in their book are not from their pocket. Yes, they may put some reflections, which I'll come to that later. Whatever they put in these tafsirs are as per their understandings of the traditions of the Holy Prophet and Ahlul Bayt. And they made sure to apply different methodologies of tafsir. Like we have tafsir by Quran. Tafsir by the traditions of the Prophet, for example. So Imam Ali tells us, Quran explains itself. So when it comes to tafsir, I must rely on Prophet and Ahlul Bayt. In the simplest way, I must rely on a good, authentic tafsir book. So if you are given a verse in Tartil Quran competition, for example, or LFQC or any other tafsir, uh, Baba, for you to do a good tafsir, you need to look at tafsirs of Mufassirin. Otherwise, I cannot come and sit in front of the judge and say, my understanding, this is the tafsir. Based on what? Because tafsir, to do a tafsir, you need certain bodies of knowledge. So many bodies of knowledge are needed for one to qualify to be a mufassir like Taba Tabai and the rest. First, the person has to be solid in history. The person has to be solid in ilm rijal the science of hadith. The person has to be solid in ulum al-Quran, the science of Quran. The person has to be solid in logic, in philosophy, in Arabic grammar, in morphology, before one can do tafsir of the Holy Quran. So tafsir, just go to tafsir Namuna, take a book, enlightening commentary. I'm sure you know you heard of this enlightening commentary, you know it. Read that. And there are other tafsirs which have been translated. Even Mizan, they are still translating. So when it comes to tafsir, I cannot do tafsir on my own. I need to rely on the Prophet and Ali. That's number two. Quickly, number three, it is called al istibatan from Button. Understanding the secret of the Holy Quran. Quran has secret, my dear mothers and fathers. When one tradition will tell us from Imam Jafar that every ayah has a vahir and batin. And one tradition of Amir al-Mu'minin, every ayah has seven inner parts, for example. So you take one ayah, you can unlock the secret of that ayah into seven. Now when it comes to the secret of the verses, I cannot do it. Say the ways you can do it, bro. You need to depend on who? Prophet and Ahlul Bayt. So let me give an example. Maybe I will ask a question. Maybe one of you can answer me. You know, there are two groups of verses in Quran. Kindly pay attention to this. This is easy. You should know. But just it will be an example of understanding the secret of the Holy Quran. There is one ayah where Allah says, وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرَ Isn't it? He's talking about pregnancy. He said, carrying a baby and weaning a baby. Mothers, you know better than us. May Allah bless you, man. And grant you long life, inshallah. And Jannat al-Fardaus next to baby Fatima, inshallah. You see, Quran says, carrying a child and weaning a child. Weaning means to stop breastfeeding, Yeah? Some children can be nightmares stopping them. <laughs> 30 months. I want to listen to this very carefully. 30 months. So she carries the baby, gives birth, breastfeed. All in all, takes 30 months. That's one ayah. Another ayah said, وَالْوَالِدَاتُ يُرُضِعْنَ أَوْلَادَهُنَّ حَوْلَيْنِ كَامِلَيْنِ Liman arada ayyutim He said, Mothers should breastfeed their children for two years. So long as they want to complete. It's a wajib 
but highly recommended. Two years you breastfeed your baby. No, mother said, no, I want to give water, Sheikh. He said, no problem, give water. But you know what prophet said, when you breastfeed, he said, the right is food for the child. And the left of the breast is water for the child. So second ayah said, breastfeed for two years. Now, if you combine these two verses, one verse said 30 months, pregnancy winning. And one verse said, two years. Combine the two verses. What is the secret? Who can tell me? It's easy, Banna. In Swahili, they say, Banna. This is easy. What's this? Because they ask Imam Ali, what's the secret? Fantastic, mashallah, smash the... Imam Ali, beautifully mentioned, Imam Ali said, if you combine these two verses, the result is that a woman can give birth at six months. Six months of pregnancy. So you have 24 months and you have 30 months. You subtract the 24 from 30. Six months. So a woman can give birth. That's the secret. I don't know. This is from Imam Ali. So when you are preparing for tafsir, you have to look at the secret. And these mufassirin, all our books, they write them also. Especially Taba Taba. I mean, I told Makarim Shirazi right in Namuna. So that is the button. And of course, you know, as she has, we love this, which is good. I mean, it's not bad. It's excellent, in fact. You know, sometimes we read Quran, we said, you know, Maraj al Bahrain yal taqiyan, for example, the two rivers, they are meeting, but they are not affecting each other. You know, this is hot, this is cold. But mashallah, they are going together. And you touch this, you feel hot, cold. And I've seen this in South Africa. You know, I used to live in South Africa. So there was a time we visited Cape Town. You know, they call it Mother City. So Cape Town, wallah, you've got two seas. Hot and cold. Even now you go to Cape Town, South Africa, you see that. MashaAllah, Habibi, Kumail, eh? They are together. Mujiza of Allah, Karama. Together. And you touch this, you feel cold. You touch it, you feel hot. But when you come into the secret of the Quran, we said this Bahrain is Hassan and Hussein, for example. This is secret down. I don't know. I need to rely on a tradition from Prophet and Ahlul Bayh. And if you bring this into your tafsir, it makes it beautiful. So when it comes to istibtan, meaning butunul Quran, the secret of the Holy Quran, I can't do anything. I need to rely on the Prophet and Allah. So, so far, tafsir, istibtan, I must rely on someone. Who is that one? Ahl al-Bayt al Let's go to number four. At-Ta'wil. Ta'wil is different from istibtan. Ta'wil is from the word awala. To return something to its origin. How? You see, Quran is made up of two major verses. Ambiguous verses and clear verses. Some verses of the Quran are ambiguous. They are not clear. Example. Ayatul Kursi. Ayatul Kursi is an ambiguous verse. Although one of the best verses in the whole Quran because it talks of Tawheed. But it's very ambiguous. Ambiguous in the Kursi. We don't believe Allah is a ma'a that has weight and occupies a space. Me Nur Muhammad have weight. Here currently I'm not in Brom. I'm here in Leicester. I'm here in Leicester. I'm not even in my house in Brom. I'm just here in Leicester. Leicester also I'm not in the hotel. I'm here in Husseini Masjid between the ladies and gents here. Yani I'm limited by this space. But Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is everywhere, isn't it? But why Quran is using human feature to describe Allah? Because Kursi is human feature. So Ayat al-Kursi is an ambiguous verse of the Holy Quran. Of course, ambiguous to us, not to Prophet and Ahl al-Bayh. That's one example. Another example is, you know, beautifully, Ben, I give you this ayah. Yadullahi fawka aidihim. Allah's hand is above their hand. Of this human feature, but he's using it to describe himself. For our Sunni brothers, when they described, they said, Yas hand was not like ours. 
But this verse is also ambiguous. Now, how do I explain an ambiguous verse? I need to refer it to a clear verse. Otherwise, I can't. I can't. How do I do so? In most cases, I need to rely on a little bit. But if you are smart with Quran, if you have really gone into Quran properly, huh? Mashallah, salam alaikum. If you are really good in Quran, you'll be able to figure out. But al Bayt made it simple for us. So if you read tafsir books, they made it easy. But definitely when it comes to ta'wil also, I need. And that's why I said tafsir class, Quran class are very important. But I will indicate to that later. So ta'wil also, don't try to apply your mind too much. But yes, yadullah, I say kudra of Allah, for example. But what is kursi and what is arsh? As I mentioned the other night, we had question and answer. Kursi and Ars are zones of Allah's power and authority. Mashia of Allah. But these are ambiguous verses. So there's Ta'wil. The last one is Tadabur. Tadabur, reflection. Tadabur, my dear brothers and sisters, you are free to do your Tadabur. And I'll explain to you how. Tadabur, you don't need anyone. Tadabur is what have I understood from this verse. Me. So I'm not going to impose it on anyone. But this is my personal reflection of the verse. There's nothing wrong. But of course you can't do reflection and misguide people. Because there are people who do that unfortunately. But I can read a verse. And say you know what. My understanding of this is this, and this is how I will apply. That's why if you read even tafsirs, Mufassirin, at the end, they will give you reflections. So reflection you can do. Easily. Let me give you a verse and see if one can reflect here and one can reflect from the ladies. I'm going to give you just a random verse, really. <laughs> Allah says in Quran, وَمِنَ nasi." Amongst people, there are those who sell themselves seeking the pleasure of Allah. If someone recites this verse to you and asks you to reflect, what will be your reflection? From the gent, who can tell me? Eh? Everything that they do is for the sake of so that now is direct one, man. I want your own reflection. What do you understand by this verse? As a youth, there are people who sell themselves to Allah, seeking his pleasure. Anyone? Huh? You have value as an individual in what way? Okay, so this is a reflection. He said, you, before you sell yourself to Allah, you need to value yourself. That's good. That's good. From the ladies, what, what, what will be your reflection of this ayah? Uh, anyone there? What will be your reflection of the ayah? Or what lesson you get from this ayah? I can't hear the voice. Ah, Santi, mashallah. I learned from this ayah to sacrifice your personal wishes for the sake of Allah. Solid. So these are reflections. But I cannot come and sit with people and say, this is the gospel truth everybody must follow. I can't do that. When Quran invites us to do tadabur, tadabur you are free to do. Tadabur, there's no problem. But I cannot do tafsir, I cannot do istibtan, I cannot do ta'wil. So these are just in brief, you know, because of time, five ways we can approach the Holy Quran. And if any one of you, inshallah, try to build a relationship with the Quran, then inshallah, 
I think you'll come across this. And inshallah, towards the end, I will mention something. Let me write it because before I forget. If you really want to build a strong relationship with Quran, what is it that you need to do? Now it's time for your questions, really, because I've spoken too much and I wasn't supposed to talk for that long. But Let's go for your questions. You can write and send them to me or if there is a mic going, floating around. Is there a mic going around? Ali Abbas. Yeah, he's bringing the mic. How is going to, if you don't have questions, then I will ask you. <laughs> Cla classic, man. I've got so many questions in my mind, man. No, no, it's good for people to ask, really. Lala Saloni, Baba, you Saloni. Allah, this guy, man, is on another level, man. Must the Cooper, man, that's him, man. Okay, first question. Say the voice. Salam alaikum. Salam habibi. Um, so, the question is when uh, when you say that we have to recite the Quran the makraj and without proper pronunciation, uh, people can't hear you. So we we get told that we have to recite the Quran with makraj and proper pronunciation, right? But is that how it was revealed to the Prophet? Because it's 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 a language, right? So when he was then talking to the that's a good question Sahaba. Was he reciting it like that or was that's he a good question. just talking to them? That's a good question. So you see, when you look at that's why Quran classes are very important. Your question is part of Ulum al-Quran, the sciences of the Holy Quran, which I will mention at the end, inshallah. You see, when Quran was revealed to our beloved prophets, it was recited in different accents. Yeah, different accents. Yeah. So, Quraysh accent was there. Yemen accent was there. Syrian accent, Damask, was there. I think uh, Bahrain accent, if I'm not mistaken, Kufan accent. So there were seven, if you like. But then the third Khalifa, Uthman, he united the accent under the accent of Imam Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam. And that is the Qurayshi accent. So what we are reciting now, Habibi Uwais, what we are reciting now is the Qurayshi accent. Amirul Mu'minin was an excellent reciter of the Holy Quran. But yes, of course, we have Warish. Warish also is good. Like, for example, instead of reciting Wad Duha, you said Wad Duhe, Wad Layli Iza Saji, Ma Wad Daaka Rabbuka Wa Ma Kali. Like when you come to Africa, West Africa, I have my West African you know, brothers and sisters and mother here. You know, in West Africa, Marshall, this warish is excellent also. There's no problem. In fact, you had that good reciter, Sudanese reciter, Noor, what is his name, Noor? The, the gentleman who was uh, blind and he passed away a few years ago, he used to recite warish. So the way we are reciting, that's what we know. That's it. This way. That's what we know. So definitely one needs to learn how to recite. Because if you look at Quran itself, Quran said, Waratil al Qurana Tartila. Tartil. Recite Quran the way I look at it, I translate it. Recite Quran with a thorough recitation, meaning correctly, accurately. So if you look at other Muslims, they said, Uthman, the third Khalifa, compiled Quran. We don't believe in that. We believe Quran was compiled during the lifetime of the prophets. And the one in charge was Imam Ali through the guidance of our beloved prophet. But Usman united the accent. Quraysh. Yeah, prophet is Quraysh. Today is our mashallah. We have Shaka Hassanani. He is an Arab. He speaks Arabic very well. They all have their accents. Yamani, they've got their accent. You go Iraq, Sheno, Sheno, Shakumak, Shakumaku, Shakumaku. You've been to Ziara? Ah, Shakumaku, Zenin. So they all, you go to Emirat, they've got their own accent, Habibi. Yeah. So they've got accent, different accent, although same Arabic. But then you have to come to the classical, the proper one. The best one, of course, is Prophet Muhammad. And Alhamdulillah, this is a, so it's very important for us to encourage everyone. 
Le Otherwise, okay, if you don't recite this, which one are you going <laughs> to There is no other way. Your question is solid, man. Yes, the citation is asking. Ah, uh, so and very good. So that is something a secret of Allah with Prophet. Obviously, nobody would know. Prophet would even tell them, look, Jibreel just came to me, and this is what he presented to me. But the recitation we are doing, yes, this is how Imam Ali recited. Yeah. That's a good question, really. It's a very bad. But Jibreel. How did he recite? Well, I'm <laughs> I, <laughs> that I don't know. <laughs> but yes, Prophet knew Quran better than the Jibrail. Jibrail was a postmaster. <coughs> What's the name of the post com postal company here in the UK? Royal? Mesquite Bichare, he brings you the letter, he put it there, he goes there. Is he better than you? No. Jibra'il, you know, if you look into deeper Quranic discussions, the reason why Allah could have spoken to Prophet directly, really. But the reason why, this is one of the reasons, Allah sent Jibra'il to Prophet is because he wanted the angels also to feel the impact of the Holy Quran. So as to how that conversation happened, we don't know. But Prophet would recite. Otherwise, we didn't know. Yeah, we didn't know. It will be like, uh, 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 like Chinese language. <laughs> Stuck for Allah. Okay, second question. Lady, no, okay, let me go to the gentleman, the young man there. If you're saying and you have a lisp and you can't say a letter properly, is it good or is it bad or? So long as you keep trying, it's good. Why not? We cannot discourage one from reciting. But you have to keep trying. And obviously making mistakes are never an excuse for one not to learn. But you always try based on your capability. All of us make mistakes, absolutely. But, eh? No, 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 that's okay. Don't worry. Oh, mashallah, that's a blessing. Don't worry, man. Don't worry, don't worry. If you have a lips, don't worry, man. Recite it. Like, for example, you, 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 were, you were here, most of you, day before yesterday, Kamba recited, Wallahi, he melted my heart. I didn't know it was Kambar who was reciting. Because I know Kambar. Whenever I come to Leicester, Kambar is always here. But when Sheikh Asadid mentioned, and then I said, Ya Allah. Amazing, man. This is a voice which will break the doors of heaven. Because with his circumstance, he recited. This is a type of recitation you are guaranteed acceptance of Allah. Wa so depending on your circumstance, Allah accepts you. Let's go to the ladies, man. Any so question, you can give me the papers if you have written something. I wanted to know, uh, besides enlightening commentary and tafsir al mizan, any other good sources of tafsir you would suggest in English? Uh, that's a very good question. Obviously, mizan is not complete, as I mentioned, but they are working on it. It should come very soon. When I say soon, maybe within a year's time, one year or so. They're really working very hard on mizan. And I think if mizan comes out, enlightening commentary, good one, but it's general, really. So Tafsir Namuna, there is a molakhas, summary of it in four volumes. There's a blue color also, Tafsir Namuna of Ayatollah Makari Mishirazi. In fact, they used to sell it in Birmingham. I don't know whether you guys have seen it before. They used to sell it in Birmingham. There is a guy, Alamdar, he used to sell. But in English? In English, yeah, yeah in English, yeah. Summary in, four, in four, four or five volumes. Yeah, in English, not in Urdu. In English. So that is there also. You can check that. Otherwise, really, we have the Tafsir of Sayyid Khoi, but it's in only one volume. Do you know the name of Tafsir of Sayyid Khoi? Tafsirul? Huh? Come on, guys, man. What's the Tafsir of Sayyid Khoi? I'm answering a question. No, no, I will, I'm, I'm, I'm still answering a question. Al Bayan. Ah, Santom. Jazakallah khair al Even some of the Western Academia, they are using it. It's one volume, but you know, said Khoi was a machine of knowledge. So that is also available in English. You can even download it online, PDF. Tafsir al Bayan of Said Khoi. It's very good tafsir, absolutely. This tafsir al Amuna that you mentioned, it's available online as well? Uh, online, I'm not sure. 
we need to check. And the best place to check really is alislam.org. If they don't have it, then it's not online. They're still collecting money for it. Because the Urdu version is there online, but English. Yeah, no, so Urdu, yeah, English, the translator sometimes needs some money, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. But you have to check tonight, inshallah. Check online. There, there are four volumes, definitely. Five, I think, translated in blue color. Okay. And then, of course, so if you know Urdu, then obviously you not have much of a problem. Because you have a good number of our tafsirs are translated in Urdu. Any that you can suggest besides Tafsir and Amuna? English. Urdu. Yeah, Mizan. Most of it you can find in Urdu. Yeah, Mizan, Tafsir, Mizan. It's top. You can find. And then in Urdu, obviously, Tafsir Bayan also you can find in Urdu. There is currently Tafsir Tasnim. You heard of Tasnim? Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli. Solid tafsir. Top. Top of the top. Jazakallah. Yeah. It's there. It's out in Farisi. I think they are working in Arabic. But you know, the Urdu scholars are very quick in translating it in Urdu. So if you check, you'll have. So if you speak Urdu, I don't think you should have a problem, really. Urdu is a very rich language, and you should be able to get a lot in Urdu. Nam, uncle. Uh, just say one question. Uh, what's your opinion about the tafsir written by Agapuya? Uh, because that's in English, and I find that very useful. So, so Agapuya is not tafsir, it's translation. Yeah, Agapuya is it's just a bit of uh, explanation. That's what we don't call tafsir, it's translation. Obviously, I, I gave an example of Agapuya because for me, he's it's, it's top notch translator because he has command of all the languages. Yeah? So, that's not tafsir. That translation of the Holy Quran. But sometimes translation also, you need accurate translation. You don't need just any translation. I love that. It's the best, personally. Of course, there are other also, but Agapuya is solid translator. Yeah. Any other question? From the ladies, any other, que any other question? Okay, yeah, there is. Okay, let's go to the gents and then I'll come. Yeah. There's a Quran app called Quran Hadi. Quran Hadi, yeah, I heard about yeah. it, man. Yeah, it's really good app. So you've got the word by word and you've got Shia Tafsir on there as well. Fantastic. So that's a good one. So if you can mention, there is a Quran app called Quran Hadi. If you can check it, man, I think it will help you, man. <laughs> okay, let me go to the ladies. Question? Yeah, so we've got a question. Um, if the Quran was compiled in its correct order in the time of the Prophet, Salawah. then what is the role of the tafsir by Imam Ali alayhi salam compiled in the order of revelation? Thank you. Thank you. That's a good question, man. So Quran needs a teacher. It has to be taught. So why we call al al bayt walking Quran? Simply means teaching. Of course, they taught and they implemented it in their lives. And so the verses of the Holy Quran manifested in the lives of Ahl al-Bayt. So the Mus'hafa Ali, the person is referring to in the question. Thus, this Quran we have in addition to explanations. So now you see you have Tabata Bayas, Tafsir, okay? So you take Mus'hafa Ali, it's like the Tafsir of Imam Ali, you understand? But of course, if you know Arabic very well, there are so many resources. We have Allah, Allah, Allah unbelievable resources. Wallah. You'll come across peace and peace here and there, the tafsir of Ahl al -Bayt. You'll come across. Tafsir of Imam Jafar Sadiq, tafsir of that one. You'll come, you'll come, you'll come across. So Musaf Ali is currently with the 12th Imam. He will reappear with it. Like Musaf Fatima. So Musaf Fatima, what is inside? It's the secret of the Holy Quran. Because when the Holy Prophet left this world, Fatima alayhi salam was mourning him, Allah sent Jibrail to Fatima with the secret. But the secret, the terminology they use, they say ta'wil al-Quran. She is the teacher of Ahl al-Bayt when it comes to the secret of the Holy Quran. Because Jibrail would go to her and she would inform Imam Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. So that one with Imam Ali alayhi salam is not a different Quran from this Quran. As some may purport out there. No, same Quran, but with explanation. It's like you have a science book. Baba, if you have this book without someone to teach you, 
you will prescribe wrong medication. <laughs> so Quran, it needs manukuti babe, the one who was addressed. Yeah, so that is the answer to that. Any question from here? Any question? I think the gentleman, the gentleman let's go to the ladies and then we'll Assalamu alaikum I have Allah. two questions. Yeah. Um, the first question is uh, regarding the hifz of Quran. Naam. Um, if I have uh, like half an hour per day to give for Quran, right? Would you prefer for me to go more in depth towards tafsir or to do hifz? I mean, uh, schools of Sunnis always pick on us that we don't emphasize on hifz enough and they are quite ahead of us and uh, sometimes they would uh, look at our masjid Okay, recall one half is for us from your mosque. And you know how many huffaz we have from one mosque. Any, it comes like uh, mubahat that we are at least uh, doing the hifz of the Quran. This is number one. Number two, uh, Maulana wanted to ask you regarding certain verses in the Holy Quran which talks about punishment. For example, zina and the punishment for zina or drinking wine and the punishment of wine so quran is for every arena it should be applied right so those certain verses which were applied at the time of rasulullah how can they be related to us in in this arena thank you Ahsanto. thank you very much mashallah mashallah so the first one is about the hips but i forgot to mention not memorizing the holy quran is also abandoning the holy quran but of course, not memorizing everything. You come every salat fatiha in nata in akhen kulu Allah. Maybe go go a bit, man. You memorize something. You know, compilation of the Holy Quran went through stages. The first stage of the compilation of the Holy Quran was memorization. They were memorizing in those companions. That's how they preserved this Quran for us. And then later on, they realized that people may forget, innit? it? They had resources and they started documenting it. So it's very important. But you ask a very tricky question now. I have a few minutes. Do I do the tafsir or do I do the hips? I will say, look, you need to have a good timetable. You don't have to do everything in a, on a day or in a day. It, 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 there must be a planning. So I need to plan. If I plan properly, inshallah, hips will fit in somewhere. Maybe today I don't do hips, but tomorrow I do. Or maybe, you know, we, yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So hips, you know, let me tell, okay, my, ex my experience, to memorize is easy, but to retain is difficult. So how do you retain? Of course, people have different modes, but what I've done and helped me even as you're driving, you are doing. As you're cooking, you're doing. You're eating, you're remembering. You know, how do you prepare lecture? I prepared my lecture before I came to Leicester. I knew all that I was going to talk before I came. But I, I knew like six months before Ramadan. Because they invited me not this year. Yeah. So, but when I come, tomorrow I'm giving a lecture, isn't it? Wherever I am, when I'm free, I'm thinking, I'm reflecting on tomorrow's lecture now. I'm putting them in different departments of my mind. That's how he is. Hives, yes, you will see it next to my alim teacher, and he will help you. But wherever you go, you need to be. That's why you see those who are who fast, they have small Quran here always, or in their bag. When they forget, they open. But today, Alhamdulillah, with the blessing of the phones, you just... But as I said, planning is very important. It has to be planned properly. So give an example just to motivate you here in Leicester. So you know in Birmingham, they st we started this uh, LFQC, Lady Fidda Quran competition. You know, some of you participated. So the first year we finished, the team realized that the Quran is weak in the community. <coughs> I.e. recitation, understanding, and hips. So what did they do? They established Al-Abbas Quran Academy. It's a top-notch flagship program they are doing. It's expensive. We pay. Even my kids go. But it's excellent. 
So at Abbas Quran Academy, what are they employed good teachers? Some of from the community, some majority of them are Egyptians who live locally in Birmingham, but it's online. So they pay in a in a week. I think they've got two classes or three classes. It's online, yeah, solid man, and they have graduation. So last year, sometime last year, if I'm not mistaken, or a year before. In one of my Juma Khutuba, second sermon, I said, no, man, I think we need to work on memorization, man. No, man, I, I think it's too much, man. We, you know, she has sometimes too much shortcut, too much, everything shortcut, everything shortcut, everything shortcut. We need to also, you know, Imam Ali, they memorize the whole Quran, man. Although, some of them also memorize the whole Quran. So, Alabas Quran Academy lead, they picked it up from my khutbah. And they set up Quran Hibs department. The way I see things, I'm just telling you, inshallah, in the next five or six, seven years, they will produce hofaz. I think so. They are going very fast. And they've made it batch by batch. Well, life you see those young girls and boys who are doing the haves, man. You cry sometimes. It's happening. We have to do. And these are children who go to school. They go to school. And you know what motivated me more? You know, if you look at our mosque in Brom, there's a bridge. You know that bridge leading to Lady Pool? I'm sure you should know Lady Pool, man. Yeah, if you don't know Lady Paul, then you don't belong to the UK, man. <laughs> What's this for? Hamshi, Hamshi. Chakula. <laughs> Food. <laughs> Lady Paul. Lady Paul is about, mashallah. It's like Everton, Everton. How do you call it? Everton or Everton? Everton Road, yeah. But Lady Paul is class. So, Sometimes, you know, I finish mosque, I'm going home under the bridge in the afternoon. I see children coming out of the school. They're changing their clothes. They're putting kanzus. So sometimes I would stop and ask, these are Sunnis. Why? Yeah, we are going Quran class. Uncle, you're not going home. No, 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 no. Quran later home. What do you do? Have the recitation. Then I said, okay, fine. These are the same children. They are all Brit British. Our children also are the same bread. <laughs> if they are doing it, what stops us from doing it? Because you see, when you inspire a child with negativity, the child grows with it. <laughs> no, it's difficult. Better. Better is difficult. No, no, no. Take some rest. It's difficult. You know, the child is going to do No, I can't, man. But if you say, you know what? You can do it. Take a bit of rest. Try, man. Take it. Because children, when they are children, that's the time to work on them. When they come of age, it's not easy, man. The world is going to need a chunk of them. But when they are young, that's the time, Habibi. Because children, they have an unbelievable energy. Their energy is unstoppable. But they, you come to the house, they are picking this one, you're stopping them. By the time you stop them, they are going to hold another one. By the time you finish that, they are there by the television. They are pulling the wire. Hey, stop, man. They are pulling that. The energy is unbelievable. So that is why, as you're cooking, you're teaching them Quran. Bismillah rahman and Bismillah rahman Sometimes they play, they do. That's how you teach them. By the time you realize they memorize most of the verses of the Holy Quran, you'll be shocked. Taba Tabai of Iran. How old are you? About 60 years, the young boy memorized the entire Quran. Today, Iran, they've got so many of them uncountable. And even in the UK, of course, we're talking of Sunnis. There are so many young swam. So that's very important. The second question is a very valid question. We believe Quran is relevant without a shred of doubt. Quran is current. And we believe halalu Muhammad halalun ila yawm al Wa haramuhu haramun ila yawm al All those laws are relevant. And I'll explain to you why. Because sometimes I may look at it and say, no, this is not relevant. No, man. Those laws are relevant so long as the barometers are met. 
So, like here, I cannot come and say, I'm going to implement Islamic law. <laughs> it's neither here nor there. It's not allowed in Islam. The only time one can say, I'm going to implement Islamic law, is when there is a fully functional Islamic government with all the apparatus in place. So that's why those people who are just crazy, excuse my word, we are in the mosque, going Islamic State, this, this. They are some shayateen here. <laughs> so definitely, these are laws of Allah. Tabarakal. And as I mentioned earlier on in my member, not every law will make sense to us. Like, for example, why am I doing Maghrib 3 Rakat? Why? I don't get it. I don't know. If you ask me, really, I don't know. Why Isha for Rakat? Yes, some people will try to philosophize, give some secret, but Allah knows his wisdom. But why am I doing it comfortable? Because I believe Imam Ali is the legitimate wali of Allah. I know before I read it. <laughs> it's the legitimate wali of Allah. Wa so therefore, it's relevant. Really, Quran is current. That is why Allah made it the, the miracle of the Holy Prophet. The miracle. Quran is too deep. That's why I said, you know, really, if you... You know, when I, when I used to be in Hausa, they used to teach us Tafsir al-Mizan in class. Class. Not all, but they used to teach. Well, I, I remember very well. Initially, lower level, uh, they, will, they will teach you Namuna, Amtal, the thematic one, because Atullah Makarim Shirazi first wrote the thematic, Tafsir Mawdu'i, and then later on, he wrote the Tartivi. They used to teach. And then when we got to settle level, they were teaching Mizan. Because Mizan has some very philosophical and mystical points, man. It's like Najul Balaga, man. Sometimes even, really, I'm telling you myself, I sweat a lot, man. It can be tough. Sometimes you need to go back to the old books you've made some note, you know, to try to capture it. It's, it's, it's not easy. So Quran is too deep. And that is why I say, you know, if you look at Tafsir Tasneem of Ayatollah Jawadi Amul, yeah? Oh, man, solid, man. Solid. It's also like 20 volumes, but it's powerful, man. Oh, that's another one. Tafsir Bulan is also solid, but hey, this Tasneem is... Uh, because you see, Abdullah Jawadi is a top notch philosopher. He's a top notch mystic. He's mushtahid. It's mufassir. It's logical. You name it, man. You know it, Lajwadi Amali. Old man, yeah? But still strong. You look at his videos, man. It melts your heart, man. Even yesterday, I was watching one of his clips, man. He was saying, you know, Allah hosted us in Ramadan. Like the way he hosts us when we go for Umrah and Hajj. But after Ramadan, Umrah and Hajj, he's not going to host us. He will only host those who want Allah to host them. So, Jawadi Amuli, so yeah, deep, 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 they unlock the secret of the Quran. So, inshallah, we'll encourage you, inshallah, to do more. I have like 10 minutes to go. Any other question before I conclude? Yes. Allahu Akbar. Uncle, you have a lot of money, that's why. Uncle is now, he said he's regarding homes and zakat. In the Quran. <laughs> you have a lot of money, man. We are talking of maski in the Quran. <laughs> but that's a valid question. I know this has been a locus of contention amongst some of our Mominin brothers. And, but it's a very simple thing, really. You see, every place in Quran where the term zakat appeared, or appears, does it refer to the zakat of money? We need to understand the context. 
Sometimes zakat simply means tazqiya to nafs, purification of the heart. Sometimes zakat simply means normal charity, general charity. So zakat everywhere doesn't mean zakatul mal. For example, Allah will say, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَحِرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّهِمْ بِهَا Allah said to take from their money charity. تُطَحِرُهُمْ You will purify them through taking that money. And then he said, تُزَكِّهِمْ زَكَاتْ تَزْقِيَةً So not every place really. I mean, other Muslims, they give only zakat. They don't have homes. We are giving homes also. We are not saying don't give zakat. You give zakat when you qualify to give zakat. Zakat, you all know, is on certain products. So if you are engaging in those products, farming, mineral products, you know them depending on the nasib, then definitely, or the nasib, you have to give the zakat. So let me make the equation clear. Not everyone who gives homes gives zakat. But everyone who gives zakat gives homes. But this needs maybe a bit of discussion, inshallah. Yeah, I think we we done. Any other question from the lady? Just one last one. Okay, please. Um, sister said she's an older person, and all my life I tried to hips but unsuccessful. Despite my age, I don't want to give up. Can you give some tips? Oh, bless her. <laughs> well, the tips. Uh, yes, I can try to give some tips. I will say to the sister, really, Allah will bless her. First thing is, don't give up. Memorizing the entire Quran is a blessing. But if you can memorize all, whatever you, you are able, you know, it's good. What you cannot achieve all, you cannot miss all. So, the little, so, if I'm in a position of the sister, I will say, every day I will do one verse. And I will start with the short chapters. Short, short ones. So, the way they, I learned it from Africa, from Ghana, West Africa, you know. So, they take from the separas, but so we'll do like from Sabbi Isma Rabbikal A'ala to Nas. And then from Naba to Sabbi. And from Jin to Naba. From Katsame Allah to Jin. So, I start to that. So slowly until I make sure all those, I capture them. No rushing, just do it slowly but surely. You'll be able to do. Start with the small, small surahs. Because if you start with Bakara Ali Imran, you will get into a zone where you don't know whether la ilaha la But all you will be blessed, but it's not easy because this is my personal experience. When I started here some time ago in Ghana, many years ago, you know, they made us to start with this long, long surah. We, we then found ourselves in limbo. But there are scholars, really, who would tell you, start from the big chapters. Once you deal with the big chapters, then the small ones are walk over. So it really depends on what works. But for the lady, I think she should go for the small ones. And she shouldn't worry if she's not able to finish the whole Quran. Yeah. So in conclusion, brothers and sisters, what I would like to conclude with, as I mentioned earlier on, is that, you see, the understanding of the Holy Quran depends on two things, which I think you need to have some classes here and there. The first one definitely is Ulum al-Quran. Ulum al-Quran, the sciences of the Holy Quran. You see, it is in Ulum al-Quran only you learn the science of abrogation, abrogated verses, non-abrogated verses. You learn the science of compilation of the Holy Quran there. You learn the recitations of the Holy Quran. I mean, not recitation as in Tartil, but the science of the recitation of the Holy Quran. So Ulum al-Quran is crucial. And then the other one is tafsir. Tafsir. So once a month of tafsir. You come together. You look at the chapter. Of course, if you have a sheikh or sheikh or muliani or somebody who can help you better. But 
once in a week, once in two weeks. Because you see, Quran, if you leave it, you leave a gap. Anytime you come, it's like the first day. You have to constantly go into Quran. Always. So the science of the Quran and the exegesis of the Quran is so important. Wallah is so important. Let's do that, guys, man. Are we going to try, inshallah? So that should be, inshallah, our individuals, really. Our action plan. You know, one of our action plans at the end of the holy month of Ramadan. We need to make Quran a top-notch priority. Top-notch priority. And inshallah, you have the Tartil Quran competition here. I think is the best platform. Use that. Because it helped all of us. For me also, I used to attend a lot of Quran competition. Even while I was in Qom. And that helped a lot. Because it pushed you to really work on your Quranic understanding. We wish you all the best of luck. You remember us in your du'as. And we do the same, inshallah. And you forgive us for any shortcoming. Allah bless you and protect you, inshallah. Let's recite Fatiha for all our marhumin al-Fatiha. I'm done, guys. I'm done. Brothers, there is uh, refreshments, there is ice cream at the back if you can help yourself.